This is an advanced level tutorial. You'll need to be familiar with the way your interface's routing software works before watching this. If you own either an Audient ID14 or ID22, then you are in luck because I'll guide you through the exact process on making this work. If you've ever wanted to use hardware like equalizers, compressors, reverbs, delays, etc. with your interface, and as long as it has at least four analog outputs via speakers and headphones, then this method should work. First, before plugging in cables, your outboard gear should be turned off as a precaution. The 1L and 2R outputs on the back of the ID14 are line level. If you have speakers that are connected to these outputs already, then power the speakers down now, then disconnect the audio cables. You must use cables with one quarter inch phone connectors with the ID14 or ID22, ideally of the balanced TRS or tip ring sleeve variety. The only hardware equalizer in my possession at the moment has RCA inputs, unfortunately. I also used adapters, which I do not recommend for professional usage. You'll also need to route the output of your hardware in my case, stereo unbalanced TRS to the inputs of the ID14. Luckily, I have an XLR to 1 8 inch phone connector cable and a 1 8 inch phone to 1 quarter inch adapter. For professional level gear, balanced quarter inch TRS and XLR are typical inputs and outputs. Next, set up your recording session to only output the track or tracks that you want to process through the hardware. The solo button comes in handy in large mixes. Gain staging is your next step. Analog hardware expects a level around negative 18 decibels full scale. So adjust your output faders accordingly. For this track, the largest output is around negative 0.7 decibels, but I can safely reduce it down with negative 18 just to be on the safe side. Next up, load your control panel software, then go to file and save your presets. I'll call this casual listening. Next, change the main output to dull through. Audient warns you that the output will be loud because indeed it will be more than likely. So just hit OK. This is equivalent to raising the volume knob up here, but at this point, all the volume knobs do not work. Also, it's equivalent to putting this doll 1 plus 2 fader to the zero position. If they aren't already, mute your mic 1 and mic 2 inputs, as I already have here. And also, just as a safety precaution, I like to put the faders all the way down to infinity. If you don't do this, a feedback loop will be created. Okay, so let's test how this thing's going so far. I'm gonna hit play and we'll see what shows up on the meters. This is a simple song. It was see how it was hovering around negative 18 to negative 22 decibels? That's exactly where I want it to be. Now it's time to set up the recording track. So I'll go back to my doll, double click, which adds a track, and I will click right here and choose stereo. Now, because I don't have this on ASIO right now, it says left and right, but I'll put a previous screen capture on screen right now, and you'll see it says analog one slash two. So that's set up now. And then what I need to do is use an alignment tone which I already have generated. It is a steady 993 hertz tone at negative 18 decibels full scale. I'll play that back so that my gear is aligned. On a previous screen capture, you see how analog one is hotter than analog two? On my EQ output, I adjusted the balance knob ever so slightly until the input signals are nearly equal. To make this job a little bit easier, if you expand the meter by dragging right here on the edge and then going all the way, 
you know, I can go all the way to the right if I wanted to, but usually about a third of the way or halfway is more than enough to make this alignment process more precise. After you do that, you can reset it to the smaller width. Now it's time to get the headphones involved. So back to the audience software. Make sure your volume knob right here is all the way down and then plug your headphones in. Next, set the headphone or phone's output to Q, like so. First, drag your Q master fader all the way up. You can also just hit Alt and click and it'll go all the way up. And then on mic one and mic two, do the same. So I'll Alt click and then Alt click one more time. There you go. Make sure that the Q on DAW 1 plus 2 is all the way down. At this point, press the play button and you'll see me, I'm going to adjust my headphone output. Actually, I just noticed that my headphone is disabled. If you see, see how that button right there is lit in green? Well, it should be lit in green, so I gotta click it. Now I can adjust it once I start playing. Oh, I did forget to tell you guys to adjust the Q pan on mic two all the way to the right and the Q pan all the way to the left for mic number one. So at this point, it is time to make adjustments on your hardware. Hopefully you're using headphones that were designed for mixing, such as the Sennheiser HD 600s or the Oppo PM-3. And speaking of which, if you are fortunate enough to own the plugin Sonarworks Reference and Waves NX, you can actually use those for monitoring. Now, in order to get those working, first you have to mute your cues on mic one and two, and then you wanna go over here to where it says DAW three plus four. Make sure that's muted and the fader's all the way down like this because you don't want that outputting through the line level outputs. And then also make sure Q is all the way left. And then uh, for that one, it's all the way right. And the Q is all the way up. Again, if, if it's all the way down, you can just hit Alt and then click and it'll go all the way up. And then what you wanna do is, your doll may not support it, but Reaper does. You wanna go to IO, and then right here where it says audio hardware outputs, click this. And I will show you on screen right now because right now due to the screen capture software, I can't operate an ASIO, but normally I would have two additional outputs, analog three and four. So you want to set it to that. And then make sure that this is unchecked. This is very important because if you leave this checked, this will not work. So uncheck that and then record enable. And then what you'll see, actually, yeah, it's, it's stereo. What you'll do is over here where it says record monitoring, turn that on, not auto, on. You want it on. And then you'll add your plugins with Sonar Reference 3 being the last plugin in the chain after Waves NX. So at that point, you have precisely calibrated virtual speaker room monitoring, which is the ideal setup for all this. Actually, ideally, you're using an ID22 and that has four line level outputs, but because I only have the ID14, this is what I have to do. Headphone output only. I guess technically I could run the headphone output to speakers, but eh. So anyway, yeah, after you make your adjustments, there's one more step you want to do before you print your track, which means you're recording it with hardware. You want to, if this was a bigger mix, I would just move my playback head a little bit before this audio, but because this audio starts at the very beginning, I don't like that, so I'm going to adjust it a little bit over 
so that it doesn't start playing immediately when I hit the record button, which is the next step, by the way. Now, right now, because I'm doing the screen capture and I'm not actually doing the real recording, that's why you're seeing this move. It's, it's actually my microphone. But if I were doing this for real, there would be no signal going through right now until I hit the record button. At that point, this track plays back, these two tracks record, and you don't have any feedback loop problems because of the way everything was just set up. Wait until it's finished playing through the whole track and a little bit past that. And then if you really want to, for noise reduction reasons, record some extra afterwards, like another like five seconds after this track is finished playing. And then if you need noise reduction, you'll have that for a profile. So at that point, we want to obviously hear our track through the headphones. So here's the next step. First of all, you want to go to file and save this and call it like, you know, outboard gear preset or something like that. And then what you want to do. So I had this set up on my analog three and four. So I, what I want to do is bring this down on the Qmix. And then I want to bring the Qmix up on DAW 1 plus 2, and then go back to I.O., change this so that my hardware outputs are no longer on there. You know, analog 3 and 4 are gone. Delete them. And I want to put this parent send back on. And at that point, I can record disable, record arm disable. And again, this track, let me just bring up the track where I did record it for real. Okay, so here it is. And as you see, the volume obviously is lesser than the top one. And the top track is muted because you don't want it playing back at the same time. Otherwise, you'll hear, you'll hear this. Yeah, you don't want that. So mute your original track. And then... Hit play. And that's it. Except there is a tiny bit of delay. A tiny bit. And this is where you're going to need to test your equipment out to see how much of a delay is in the signal. Reaper actually has a nice feature that allows you to compensate for that analog equipment delay and that audio interface latency delay, which by the way, I did forget to tell you one thing. Under setup, you wanna make sure that it's to the lowest buffer setting possible. So under 44.1, I can set it to 64 samples. Under 88.2 and 96 kilohertz, I can only go down to 128, but it's actually a lower latency than 441 at 64 samples, believe it or not. I've tested this already and the real time latency is less. But what you need to do is make sure that your tracks are aligned properly. Okay, so this is just for Reaper users. There's this excellent plugin called RIA Insert and it allows you to automatically compensate for that hardware latency. This video is outside of the scope of talking about this exact plugin, but if you Google RIA insert, it'll give you some information about how to use this properly. I haven't personally used this before because I don't normally use outboard gear, but it's something to look into if you're a Reaper user. So that's it guys. When you're finished, be sure to go back to your previous preset by going to file and then open and then find your preset that you started with at the very beginning of the video. And that's it. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you have any other questions that are related to the Audient ID14 or Reaper that I may be knowledgeable about, then comment and ask below.